Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. And a good Thursday morning out there, Western Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skinny on Sports right here on 98.1 FM, the sports animal. Have a little geography lesson there before we got on the air. <laughs> Trying to think about a map in your brain and where everybody's at. But anyway, uh, man, what a what a fun show we're going to have today. Devil Rays, or the, I guess we need to call them the Rays. Looking to, no, no, uh, you can call them the Devil Rays. Call them the Devil if Rays. If they wear their throwback oh, they uniforms, are gonna wear. if they right. wear those throwback uniforms that say Devil Rays on them, doesn't mean we can't. We can still call them that. Okay, we're gonna call them the Devil Rays. Devil Rays, Rays, Green Jacket, Gold Jacket. Who gives it? <laughs> <laughs> Devil Rays looking to tie history. We'll talk about that. Some high school golf at Clinton yesterday. Speaking of golf, John Rahm. See his comments. I did not. Oh, I saw man. that in the rundown. What's that about? Check that. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it. It's, don't, it's tell getting, me it's, don't tell me it's foot and mouth stuff. No, no, no. Okay. It's getting harder and harder not to like John Rahm. Okay. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Leland, Mr. Leland Searcy today, officials versus cancer at 930. I think he's got an uh, announcement maybe on the golf tournament, where and when, and we'll visit with him about what else going on with the officials versus cancer foundation, how people can get involved, uh, a lot of that stuff going on. Um, at 9.30. And then at the top of the show, Thunder Up. What an amazing performance by a young team last night. 225-9698 is the phone or the text line. That's 225-9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things. Whatever else might be on your mind, feel free to chime in at 225-9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, a couple ways to stay in touch with the show. Log on to KADSAM.com, download the app. The app's got it all. It's got radio, the Penny News, brand new edition of the Penny News. Hit the website, what, Wednesday night or Tuesday night at midnight. Pick up a free copy of the Penny News right now. It's everywhere. Let's go check the Penny News out. We've got Big Elk and Paragon TV when those things are, are rolling. Skinny on Sports Podcast is now everywhere. KADSAM.com. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Spotify. Amazon Music. You know, my wife sent me a text. All the places. Uh, uh, she she sent me a screenshot, and I don't know how this how it works. I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure her phone knew where she was at, like regionally. But she, she, you know, we both listen to Amazon Music a lot, and she hit the podcast tab, and there we were, featured podcast. It said the featured podcast today is Skinny on Sports. Now I don't know if that was, and, I, and I, she was like, "Hey, check this out." I was like, oh, that's interesting. I was sat there and thought about it. I was like, it probably knows where she's at. I'm like, hey, this is a podcast from your area. Yeah, probably not, Jared. Maybe we're, we're bigger than we think. Maybe so. But I like the the I mean, I'm not knocking any other any kind of I mean Spotify Apple, but the Amazon music one is just it's real simple. You just go there, hit play. It's real simple to find. Skinny on sports. There's no uh this is offensive. Skinny's offensive language. <laughs> Like, like Facebook. Anyways, I thought that was cool, though. Maybe we are bigger than what we think. Yeah, maybe so. Very good. Maybe people listen. Um, Man, maybe the Thunder are bigger than what we think. Last night, uh, a tough start. I think down 19-10 at one point there early on. Thunder kind of gathered themselves midway through the first quarter, ended up leading after one, led a trail by six at halftime, exploded in the third quarter. That's when SGA kind of found his footing uh, there in the third, outscoring the Pelicans 39-14, to 14, and then kind of holding on at the end uh, as obviously New Orleans made a run, took the lead there, and then Shea had the bucket on the baseline. What was that, with like 50 seconds to go? Then Oklahoma City's defense got stops when it had to have them. And the Thunder win 123-118, to 118, moving on in the play-in tournament to face Minnesota coming up on Friday. The three guys that I, I think going into the season with no Chet, nobody knew that uh, Jalen Williams from Santa Clara was going to be what he became. And so when you look at the core three guys that everybody expected to to hopefully take a jump – 
SGA, Giddy, and Dort, every one of those guys was phenomenal last night. Uh, Shea had 32. I thought he was patient, made the right play over and over and over. The one one play that sticks out in my mind uh, for him wasn't even the, the, the shot on the baseline. It was right there after New Orleans took the lead on Ingram's dunk when he got his offensive rebound, 110-108. Shea came down, immediate double team. He threw it to Giddy at the free throw line, who then bounced past down the baseline to Jalen Williams for a dunk to tie the game. I mean, it was just there. W- there was no force forcing anything in Shea's game. He made the right play and still scored thirty two and hit big free throws down the stretch. Giddy with t- a career high tying thirty one and Dort with twenty seven. Uh, I thought those two guys really were kind of the 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 thing that kept the Thunder going in the first half to allow Shea to kind of get his footing and then uh, do what Shea does, but. How about this? Oklahoma City's the first team in the play in turn. I realize it just kind of started, but uh, this could last for a while. They're the first team with three guys scoring 25-plus or more in a play-in game. OKC moves on. Just a, an amazing performance poised beyond their years with those young guys on the floor last night down in New Orleans. Yeah, that's, and I noted that last night, I sent it to you, that that final two minutes, you know, a young team – you know, panic could have set in. They could have jacked up some crazy shots and, and given New Orleans a, an opportunity to pull away, and they didn't. They stayed, you know, and even that reflected, like you said, in the first quarter where it wasn't a good start, but they just relaxed. Uh, Dort was awesome. I mean, I, I know that was one of your keys. He had to be good, and he was. I, I hope that that continues, but you never know. It's such a wild card. It's such a roulette thing for him, but – uh, in SGA, you know, he had that slow start, and I, I kept thinking, okay, he's going to get his. You know, I almost text that to us. If he just gets his average, they could blow him out. But he's going to get his. But I'm not sure how long the rest can – this was in the first half – can continue to just keep pace until SGA becomes SGA. And they did that for a half. He came alive in the third quarter, and then that final two minutes where – you know, uh, New Orleans, I think like 90 seconds, New Orleans had that lead, and they just seem calm. Younger teams usually fold in that pressure situation, hostile environment, win or go home scenario, and they just look calm. They look so much more calm and cool and collect and poised beyond their years. And that's just another reason to get excited about this Thunder team moving forward, despite what happens on Friday night. We saw what they can do, and that's what I was so big on was just get to the postseason, give these guys that experience of playing in a situation like that, because that pays off. I mean, at any level, you talk about that at the high school level, okay, they just played a, had a deep playoff run, and they return everybody for next year. That's huge. Thunder return every – we hope. We don't know what's going to happen in the offseason, but for the most part, they all return and see what pieces they add in the offseason. So, again, it just levels up my excitement for next year, but I'm very excited – about tomorrow night and their chances in Minnesota. Very excited. Oklahoma City, <clears throat> excuse me, they didn't get a ton off the bench, but I did think that Saric, <clears throat> when he came in, he at least kind of settled Valanchunas down. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were sitting there. I was uh, over at Will's having fried fish, by the way. I've got I've got something for you at the end of the show. I've got a technique. It, did it come from Will? Oh, oh okay. I've got a technique for you. <laughs> You're always wondering what you can use one of your cooking utensils for? Yeah. I can tell you. I've got something. I can't wait. Uh, but, so we were watching, in like in the first three minutes, Valanciunas had like six points and five rebounds. Yeah. And then in six minutes, he had eight and eight. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is the word. Thank you, Willie Green, for only playing him 30 minutes. We do appreciate that. Uh, even though he had 16 points, 18 rebounds in those 30 minutes, seven of nine from the field, one of one from three. But it felt like Sarich at least kind of slowed that thing down. And then you could maybe see the the disadvantage that New Orleans had with Valanchunas in the game defensively because people were going by him. And maybe that gives Willie Green some hesitation and, and does what he does um, and, and only letting him play 30 minutes. You know, the plus minus is a weird thing because you look up and you see Valanchunas minus six, CJ McCollum plus 10. That doesn't, that my eyes didn't see that, right? My eyes saw especially down the stretch, please anybody but Brandon Ingram take a shot. And if it's McCollum, so be it. You wouldn't say that about a guy that's been that established in this league as a shooter for as long as he has, but last night it was the case. And you're just like, okay, if CJ wants to take a shot, fine. At least it's not Ingram. 
Um, but the Thunder, the, those young guys down the stretch, so poised. Eight of eight from the free throw line from Giddy, Dort, and Shea. Yeah, yeah. When you had to have every single one of them. Jalen Williams, Santa Clara, not as forceful as we're normal or as we've been accustomed to seeing him, a four of fourteen. So not his greatest day. Oh, a five from three. Um and the the two Jalen Williams combined one of twelve, but man, that one was enormous when J. Will Arkansas knocks down the three with a couple of minutes left. I mean, it, it just speaks to the poise and the confidence, I think, of this team because you're talking about a dude that is in his first – he's a rookie second-round pick who has gone 0 for 6 from 3 and still has the courage and the confidence to take that shot and make that shot when the Thunder needed. I mean, it was a huge 3 that he knocked down there uh, in the waning moments of the fourth quarter. So, yeah. all in all, you know, he has 8-8-8 eight, eight, and eight in 32 minutes. You know, I, I think Oklahoma City – just it it was almost it was almost like not to that maybe not to the level of of course we didn't know what the level was back then but didn't that game not remind you a bunch of of watching that first Lakers series and the first time the Thunder back in the day in 2010 made the playoffs and you got it and this one was on the road it wasn't even at home but but watching a young team kind of just blossom right before mm-hmm. your eyes the way they did against the Lakers and Kobe that year. And, of course, that led into the Western Conference Finals the year the, the next year against Dallas and then, of course, the finals appearance in 2012 against Miami. Not saying that that's the course that this team is on, but it reminded you of that. Well, with the way the young – with the way those – and it's be, and a lot of it, I think, is because it's those three guys. And there's been some criticism right here. I've done it on Dort. Been some criticism of Giddy. Obviously, none of Shea, really, uh, to, to much extent. But for it to be those three guys, let's see, 44, uh, 58, let's see, the 22, 30, 30 of 58 from the field, so better than 50%. They also made nine out of 20 from three. It, it's just because it was those three, because of, uh, of of how much better they've gotten, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and that makes more of a difference, to me at least, that those were the guys carrying the load last night. Yeah, it, you, you mentioned that series – way back against the Lakers and that was one that you know as Thunder fans we can go back and go that was the the turning point that was when we knew something was special was ha- something special was happening in Oklahoma City with the Thunder that game last night kind of kind of had that same feeling like okay we kind of knew these these guys were good obviously good enough to get to the postseason but you know the part the parade might come to an end in New Orleans it didn't and that's a game that we can go maybe go Remember that game in New Orleans and that playing game? That they look good. They look they don't look like a fluke team that made the tenth spot in the play in. They look like a team that belongs there and that that might be one of those turning points in the franchise's history where we go back and go, okay, that's a game. You know, until maybe tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they just get bigger from this point on. Uh Scott makes a good point on the text line. Uh, the teams teams can reflect their coach. How about Dagnall? Like he deserves oh. a lot of credit too for well, how those guys just, you know, they act like they, they don't act like what a uh, it was Dean Blevins who tweeted something last night and I agreed with they it. They act like they've been there before, exactly, mm-hmm. and that starts with the head coach to me. So it was, I believe, golly, were they up one or were they up two? They run that inbounds play from the sideline. Giddy's the inbounds passer, which he is phenomenal. <laughs> as the inbound passer. I love his, yeah. But everybody in the gym is expecting a bunch of screens, Shea pop out and get fouled. And instead, he cuts to the bucket. Now, Richardson made an unbelievable play to block his shot, but then there was Dort to grab the rebound, get fouled, and make a couple of free throws. But that's something that you just you don't see very often. And then the, the confidence and the courage, and I want to say a different word, but I'm, I can't because we're on the radio, the cojones to, to – draw that play up at that time with this young team and I mean it was a layup without Richardson making an unbelievable recovery to block that shot for Shea I think they were up two because it would have been four yeah it was right before Ingram made that long three so mm-hmm. it was they're up two Oklahoma City was up to, up two and instead of taking a chance or on free throws Dagnall's going let's end it I mean it's just awesome yeah. and and I think a lot of people have noticed 
and maybe this is maybe this doesn't have anything to do with Billy Donovan or Scott Brooks. Maybe it was the players on the floor and executing plays down the stretch, but it sure seems like Dagnall has an ability to draw up a different type of play coming out of timeouts in those clutch situations. It doesn't always result in buckets, but it all it but it seemingly always results in a great shot, and that certainly happened again last night. So kudos to him. You know, he's a young guy too on the on the on the sidelines. And so he's learning as every you know, he's it, it's it's a perfect mixture right now of learning as you go and everybody uh, but 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 just the poise and the confidence of dudes that are out there, the second youngest team in the in NBA history. And and once again they're the youngest uh, they're the youngest team to win a playoff game or you know they're they're saying the playoffs are play in same thing. Yeah. And you know who the t- the two teams above them was that 2010 Thunder team, and guess who the next one was? That 2011 Thunder team. Wow. <laughs> so the three youngest teams ever to win in a playoff situation have been Thunder teams. And so it, it's it's kind of easy to it's it, it's easy to go back to that time for Thunder fans and compare it to now just yeah. because of the youth that's on the teams. It's a totally different situation. Uh, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that there's going to be three MVPs come out of this group like there was of that last one. Uh, but at least for right now, you know, riding on cloud nine after uh, it, it's the first one. That's what's crazy. It's the biggest game, well, for sure in in, in, Shea, or in uh, Giddy's career. You know, you can go to game seven in the bubble with, with Dort and Shea, so maybe this isn't a bigger game than that, but maybe it is, you know. But it, just look at Giddy's numbers in his in the biggest game he's ever played in the NBA. He goes for thirty one. He makes half his half his shots, three of seven from three. Get, grabs nine rebounds, dishes out ten assists, and oh by the way, blocks a shot. You know, and that's just that stepping up to the moment. And it was required last night, and the Thunder did it. And just man, and if if you let yourself now. We've seen these two guys, especially Giddy and Giddy and uh, Dort, from beyond the arc. They could combine like like the Jalen Williamses did last night, go one of twelve and get blown out of the gym in Minnesota. That's possible. There's no doubt about that. But at the same time, you can start to after after watching last night and the way that they were able to win that game with those young guys, and then you let your mind wander to, this is awesome. Oh my gosh. The second pick in the draft didn't even play this year. It, it, there's no lottery luck needed. We've already got him <laughs> yeah. from last. You know, yeah. we there, we don't. It doesn't matter what the ping pong balls do this year. We've already got the second pick last year in Chet, who hadn't got to play yet. What happens if he's really the second pick in the draft, right? And and feels an obvious need. I mean, he's not going to be able to, you know, sit down there and bang with with. Valanchunas or even Cat or or, or Go Gobert necessarily right off the bat, but he is rim protection. He is you no know, straight line drives right to the rim type, you know, from mm-hmm. from Ingram or, or whoever else last night. You know, and and then what what comes out of fifteen first round picks in the next three years, which some of those are swapped, so it's not exactly fifteen, but still thirty million in cap space, the number two overall pick from last year coming next year. And whatever happens in the draft this year with four first rounders the next two years, so, like I said, some of those are swaps, so you're not going to get all of them. But it's it's pretty easy to really let your mind start to wander off into fantasy land. And fantasy land looks really, really good if you're a Thunder fan. Yes, yes, very excited, very excited, very excited about tomorrow. Already making plans. Might go by the local butcher shop. He has some fresh. Um, um, uh, bratwurst i think he got made so we'll have to go pick some up do you think willie green did the thunder a favor by only playing valentina's 30 minutes uh I, maybe but that's on him not on the thunder <laughs> I mean, thunder took advantage of him not on the floor right what do you think i do uh, yeah i mean they just had no answer on but on the offensive end 
Yeah, that's a great point from Scott on the text line. Not seeing, not paying real close attention to to playoff basketball the last few years, you forget how much more physical it is. Yeah, but they watch it, you know, like that flagrant that happened on the – on uh, who got – was it Dort who got took one to the chin? And they went and they – like, okay, that's a foul after the defensive mm-hmm. foul. We got a flagrant one. And, yeah, they, they allow them to play to a point. Yeah, well, but, I, I mean, it's, there's no doubt. I mean, right. in, in a regular season game with what was happening last night, Shea would have shot 20 free throws. Yeah, that too. You know, and he had eight. In which we talked about it yesterday. He averaged 12 against New Orleans. There was no way he was going to get 12. And, and here's the truth. Four of those happened when New Orleans had to foul Yep. at the end. Yep. So he only took four free throws in the run of play. I felt like it was – if the question is how was the officiating, I think if I think it was fine. I no, mean, no, it's it, just more physical. They yeah, allow, and I allow the I, – I, I don't mind it. it it's not out-of-hand physical. It's it's to the point like, okay, let's let these guys decide the game. That's right. You know, we'll maintain it as a ref, but let's let these guys decide this game. And a big part – one of them is everybody's trying – but two, the game slows down a little bit. Mm-hmm. It gets more half court, which allows more physical play yeah. because everybody's on the same side of the floor. No, you do forget it though. You know, there's not, there's no easy buckets. There's no, you know, you don't, you don't just kind of go down the lane uncontested. And yeah, it's a, it's a totally different game, and that's why you see some of these teams. Denver is a great example of this in my mind. Yeah, they're, you know, you hear that phrase, built for the regular season. Denver's kind of built for the regular season, but can they sustain it? Because they're kind of soft. Even their own head coach called them soft in the last couple of weeks of the regular season. It changes, and and that's a big part of it. There, there's just a little bit more contact allowed. The game's slower, and you have to fire. And that's another thing that was amazing. It's just the whole night last night turns out to just be this just amazing accomplishment for young dudes, the way that they were able to handle themselves mm-hmm. and be able to win that game. Yes. Yeah, Valanciunas minus six. That's what we were talking about earlier, asking about him being on the floor for just thirty minutes. But I, that's where this—that's where the plus minus to me doesn't equate. Because if you watch that game last night, Jonas Valanciunas was way was way better on the floor than C.J. McCollum was. He just he he impacted that game at such a higher level than C.J. McCollum ever thought about doing. You look at their plus minus. Valanciunas was minus six. McCollum was plus ten. I don't think anybody watching that game felt like McCollum impacted the thing sixteen points more than Valanciunas. Some of that is just kind of when you're on the floor and when you're not, you know. And so, I just I would. And here's the thing: you may have just had to play him thirty-two, but it wasn't. It didn't need much more of him. I mean, even when Ingram missed the free throw. Down three with what twenty something seconds left. They took him out on the second. I thought they might keep him in to, to bat one back. Thunder couldn't do nothing about it, right? If right. he'd have missed no, per- Thunder weren't blocking him out. No, he's getting an easy, and he might even tip it in and get fouled. Yeah, and then you you see up oh, they're walking him off the court. <laughs> and then there was another time where you, it was an obvious situation where offense, New Orleans is going to play offense. And then the, there was going to be a timeout. And he wasn't out there. I just don't get it. I, I just it, it doesn't even need to be a ton more. Just another couple of possessions because the Thunder could do nothing with him. Especially on the glass. No. And, and, and if you think, okay, well, Ingram's going to take the shot, that's fine. Why not have him to get the rebound? Yeah. And they didn't have him out there in those key offense. When you know, you don't even have to worry about the, the defensive part of it. Because the Thunder are going to get the ball and call a timeout. They're going to grab it and call a timeout because of the way the, the, the rules work under 30 seconds. And he's not out there. I just Listen, thank you, Willie Green. I, I, I totally appreciate it. Not having that guy out there to cause havoc in the paint in those really important possessions. You know, last night was the first time in the play-in tournament history that the 10 seed had won. And they both did it last night. The 10 seed had never won a game in the play in, what, three years, this third year of it? See, I haven't been paying attention to even realize that. Third or fourth year. But, yeah, the Bulls winning at Toronto and then the Thunder winning uh, at New Orleans, first time that the 10 seed had ever won. They both do it. 
I had, oh man, I didn't. I had this queued up and then I changed the page. Did you hear DeMar DeRozan's daughter screaming yes, at free throws? That was cool. Think about this the Raptors, 18 of 36 from the free throw line. Obviously, they missed 18 of them. That's the most missed free throws in a winner take all game in, NBA, in the NBA since the LA Lakers missed 19 free throws in game seven. Of the 1969 NBA Finals. Wow. <laughs> Almost 60 Unreal. years. 55 years. Unreal. Yeah. The Raptors hadn't blown. They were up 19 with 9.09 to play in the third quarter. The Raptors hadn't blown a 19-point lead since November of 2018. And as good as Shea was in the second half, Zach Levine was that good for uh, Chicago. 32 in the second half. And so the Bulls move on to go to Miami to play the Heat. The Thunder will play Minnesota coming up on Friday. We'll have plenty of time to break that one down tomorrow. Hanging out morning after a huge Thunder win. Pleased to be joined now by the man that uh, had a kind heart for the children and doing a lot of really, really good things with cancer research. It is Mr. Mr. Leland Searcy. Leland, how are you this morning? I- I'm good. I'm good, Skinny. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing well. Just kind of reveling in the young Thunders win last night and how how impressive that was to see those young guys in that situation uh, be able to to keep their poise and, and win a game down the stretch. That was a, that was a lot of fun to watch, wasn't it? <laughs> kind of reminds you of the old school Thunder days when all those uh, now aging superstars were just kind of getting their feet wet back in the first uh, Thunder times. Um, man, officials versus cancer. You guys have just steadily grown this thing over the past few years. First off, tell everybody that maybe doesn't know kind of how this came about and what you guys are trying to do. Well, a few years back, uh, maybe eight years ago, a friend of mine that I re- used to referee basketball with, his daughter was diagnosed with a with a rare form of uh, of cancer, and there was no cure for it, and. Uh, and there is still no cure for it, to be exact. I mean, uh, you know, there's a, there's so many, uh, there's so many different kinds. So, anyway, when his daughter got diagnosed, uh, you know, I, I, I did just, I was just messing around the computer, did a little research, and found out that there are children's cancer centers across the United States get the fewest donations uh, compared to all other cancer centers, like, you know, the the the, the bigger cancer centers, you know, so. I thought, man, that's kind of strange, and so just something hit me that I thought we need to we need to raise some money for these kids, you know, try to get a cure for it. Uh, we may never find a cure for everything, but that at that time in 2015, I, I spoke with Children's Hospital. Uh, my spokesperson down there is uh, is Jeremiah Lane, and he said, right now we're about a 56 percent cure rate, and uh, we got to get that got to get that higher. So I kind of. Talked to some buddies of mine. Uh, you know, I've been in the I've been in the refereeing business. I, I refereed basketball for forty one years, so you get you you learn you, you get to know a lot of good guys. And so I I called around. I said, "Man, what what do you think? What do you think about raising money?" And they they go like, "Man, you you need to go for it. You, you're you, you this is this is in your heart, and you want to do it." So man, the the rest is kind of history. We're not we're not where we want to be yet, but I mean we're making. Making great headway uh, as of as, uh, you know as of this spring in March, uh, you guys were at the state tournament. And, and by the way, uh, Sean caught me caught me coming off the court. You know when you when y'all did the interview with me, <clears throat> Sean caught me off coming off the court, and I write all those scripts that we that we do for those. Right, I, I get all the information from the family, get all the information from the hospital. I combine the information, I write the script, and, and guys, I can write that script, and I never think twice about it. You know, I just write it, and I, and, because I went to school, I was a journalism major, so I wrote that, not even thinking anything about it, but when Steve Daniels at the State Fair Arena starts talking, yeah. and he starts, man, I get emotional, and I was totally emotional that Saturday, because uh, we we had our first uh, our first child that we've honored at the state tournament 
was going through treatments at the time we were we were honoring her, and we've never had that. We always had kids that were had, were had rang the bell. They were two three years in remission, and this was our first one to do that. And on top of that, she was a local girl, basically local from Thomas. So, and her her mom and dad are tremendous people. I got to know them an hour before the. The ceremony there, and Sean stuck that microphone in front of my face and started asking me questions, and I was emotional. I was almost to tear up. And so I apologize for that because I, I just, I don't know why, I don't know why that happens. It's just, it's just one of those weird things. But anyway, well, Leland, you, you, were, is, you were not the only one emotional, I can promise you that. Yeah. That's a special time that happens during that state tournament. Me and Aaron really. Uh, really cherish to see all that and see what you guys do, and we put it on the radio, and we want the whole state to hear it. And and right. <laughs> you didn't, you weren't the only one with uh, tears in your eyes. I can guarantee you. That. And, and yeah. let's be honest, Sean has that effect on most people that <laughs> just kind of make you cry <laughs> when you have to talk to him. <laughs> well, anyway, anyway, so we did our research and we started this thing, and. Man, we, we the first year we got seven thousand dollars in, in in donations because it was brand new, nobody knew about it, and you know the, there was a trust factor. There was a lot of people. Where's this money really going to go? What's it going to do? And we we have we have a we have a good banker where we bank our we put our money in, and he lets us zero the account every year, and we have we pay no fees, and so we donate one hundred percent every penny. That we get donated, we donate every every July. So, you know, this year is is and I I told Sean that day on the radio we're close to making uh, our golf tournament so getting getting it sewed up. Well, here we are six weeks later and we finally got it. And the reason for that is I started talking about it with other people and I went and played golf at Oak Tree here. Oh, two, three weeks ago, and I was talking to some guys there about it, and they go, man, why don't you, why don't, it, it, there's nothing wrong with having it where you're having it, but why don't you move that to the city area and see if we can get some more people involved? Right. Well, lo and behold, three weeks later, we've got, we've got guys donating money. I got guys donating money to cover the fee for our, for our golfers to play golf. That way, everything that we make at the tournament, it's donated to pediatric cancer, so that's re- that's the reason it's taken for so long for me to get this thing, and we finally finalized it this week, and and it's been a blessing. It's been uh, <laughs> it's been a lot of work, but I promise you, it's worth every second of it because this year's golf tournament is going to be special. Uh, the newly renovated John Conrad golf tur- golf course uh-huh. is where the tournament's going to be, and uh, July uh, June sixteenth. June 16th at uh, 8 a.m., and and I announced it on Facebook here a day or two ago, and I've already got like 15 guys, 15 teams entered in the tournament. So it's it's just it's just unfolding right in front of my eyes. So. All right, June 16th, that's a Friday. Uh, Friday, June 16th, 8 o'clock a.m. at uh, John Conrad in Midwest City. Uh, that, yeah, you're okay. right. That thing just opened back up not too long ago. I think they opened it. Uh, did, did they open it like in the fall, like in November? I think that's right. And, uh, I think that's right. Yeah, they, they opened it in the fall, and uh, I went down there and met met them, met the guy that runs it, and uh, they are excited to have this tournament there. They said, you know, this is this is something, and he cut me a great rate, man. I'm telling you, this the, 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 if you're going to have a golf tournament to raise money, I'm convinced that Oklahoma is the place. Oklahoma is the place you want to have your golf tournament because people just people just give and give and give and give and it's amazing what 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 when you tell them what you're doing it's amazing what you get in return. So and and I, I go ahead. Sorry. No, it's fine. I, I'm just, I just can't thank these people enough that that have hosted our tournament and it's been it's been great. So how do people that are listening right now get involved and be able to to come and and uh, uh, help help raise money and, and also get to play a brand new renovated golf course there in John Conrad. Well, uh, 
they can they can uh, they can first of all they can contact me on Facebook. I've, I've got a I've got a we've got an Oklahoma officials Facebook account, uh, account and we have, we've also got a a I've got a personal account. Or they can call me. I'll give you my phone number. Uh, my, my phone number is five eight zero two seven three zero five five zero. They can call me, uh, and and they can text me. However they want to do it, that's fine. Whole sponsors are a hundred dollars, and uh, the tournament is five hundred dollars a team. And the prize line just keeps getting better and better, uh, guys. It's it's uh, you know what we do is we give away we give away uh, we give away certificates for free golf at some of the finest golf golf courses in Oklahoma. Uh, Chickasaw Point, Belmar, I'm just going to name a few mm-hmm. off the top of my head. Chickasaw Point, Belmar, Arrowhead, uh, uh, the, the Territory, Oak Tree, Kicking Bird, uh, Winter Creek. So, there, the, you know, I just named, I just named five or six there and and they're nice they're a very nice score boarding springs boarding springs mm-hmm. elk city golf and country gave us gave us certificates last year so so uh nice golf courses you know around around oklahoma and they, they don't bat an eye they say i'll, I'll, I'll you made the secret i've got seven certificates right now for free golf plus a ten thousand dollar hole in one and you know when you say that everybody's like yeah sure hole in one 198 yards right no 165 yards it's going to be at 165 yards, ten thousand dollar hole in one. We got a sponsor for that, uh, so it's just uh, it's going to be a good it's going to be a good fun filled day. Uh, I've invited uh, Mr. Whaley. Mr. Whaley is was the director of officials for about seven or eight years. His retirement is June 30th, and I've re- I've invited him to come along with along with some other guys at the association. So. Uh, you know, it's open to anybody. You don't have to be an official. You don't have to be all you got. All you want to, all you, all you have to be is somebody wants to play golf and wants to have a good time and uh, wants to know where their money's going to and it's going to a great cause at Children's Hospital. You mentioned so. all those golf courses that that uh, you're giving away passes to. How do you get those? Are you going around to each one, playing around? You you dropped Oak Tree in there, and I, you said I played Oak Tree. And are, are you, is this what you're doing in your free time now? Just going <laughs> up and hitting up all these golf courses? <laughs> well, I do play a lot of golf. I'm not going to lie. I retired a year and a half ago, and uh, I, I I I do. I, I I go to I a good friend of mine. I went to high school with. I played golf with in high school. He's a member at Oak Tree National, and he invited me down last fall, and I told him about this golf uh, tournament, and he said, he said, matter of fact, he knew because he played with us last year at the, at the other, at the last year's tournament, and he goes, when is this year's? And I said, well, we're working on it. And he goes, he goes, let me introduce you to a guy. Well, he introduced me to the guy that, that kind of runs that place there at Oak Tree National, and he said, he said, I can't give you a certificate to National, but I can give you some certificates to, to East and West. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, it's just been incredible uh, the amount of outpouring that when you talk to somebody you tell them what you're doing they go how how, how can I help you you know how can I, what can I do I said well this is this is what we've been doing and they go we'll do that so it's been it's been so simple it's been so simple to do yet, yet it's hard work but it's not hard work if you enjoy what you're doing right that's exactly right kind of the kind of the opposite reaction you get from uh, being an official around here huh. <laughs> Boy, that's true. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? But uh, those days are almost gone. I'm the referee this year. This this is my last season of football, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to one of my crew members on my crew, and he's gonna take the crew over, and he's gonna recruit a couple guys. There's two of us. My umpire and myself are retiring from football, and this will be this will be year number 36 for football. So uh, it's been it's been a great time though. We come to Elk City and. Hey, uh, question: Is Elk City's turf down, or is it, where they're at on that? It's still grass. We're still playing soccer. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like uh, when we get there for the fall. Yeah. Well, I just heard that. I just heard that the other day that they were going to put turf down. So, anyway, one oh, more season of football, and I'm going to keep this did, tournament going did, as did, long as I can. And did you hear anything about a new press box by any chance? <laughs> I know we well, might have some listeners nice. who could. <laughs> yeah. uh, there might be some people who want to get into a new press box. That, that's just me. 
while, while they're donating money, they can donate money for that press box, right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. All right, so uh, one more time. Uh, Friday, June 16th, John Conrad, yes. 8 a.m., uh, you can get it, get in touch with Leland via the Facebook officials v cancer officials versus cancer on the Facebook, and then your, yourself yep. also. Uh, and then, uh, man, it's going to be fun. Uh, we're we haven't we got to broach that subject with our bosses. Otherwise, I'll be you know on a different team. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're right. We 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 uh, we kind of we kind of went through that last night. Uh, Jeremy Jeremy calls me. He says, "Hey, when is that tournament?" I told him. He says. We're in. Yeah. He said, I'm going to get Skinny to play with me. And I said, well, I think Skinny's going to get a team in, too. And he goes, if he does, that's wonderful. We'll get enough somebody else. So, all, all good, right? Yeah, well, it's all good. No, uh, doubt, no doubt. Thanks for the invite, Jeremy. I was just hanging out <laughs> with you last night, bud. <laughs> hey, we shared – We I found that post. We shared it on um, our Facebook page. And um, okay. I also sent a friend request to you, so you better accept it, okay? <laughs> I will do that, Jared. I, I will not turn your friend request down. Okay? Yes. Be prepared to see a lot of pictures of my kids. That's all you get from me on Facebook. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, listen. I want to tell you. I want to tell you something else. You know, since I started this, you guys have let me come on to this platform and let me talk about this, and, and it means the world to me that you guys do that. But it means the world to me that you guys care about pediatric cancer. It means the world to me that that we have people out out here in Western Oklahoma that know what it takes and we've got kids in our communities that need that place and mm-hmm. and you know if, if if a family that is is something happens to their child and they go down there and they can't afford that place it's free and that's a that's a special that's a special place and i actually my youngest son is 30 now and he his blood come back bad when he was born and you guys know what I'm talking about. They always say no news is good news, right? Well, right. they called us, and we had to take him down there. And come to find out, I don't know what happened, but it was his blood was fine. But I'm going to tell you guys, you walk through that place, and you see all those 5, 4, 5, 10, 12, 16, and 17-year-old kids, there's something wrong with you if it doesn't jerk at your heart. It is, it is incredible, the, the, it, the incredible... The, the feeling that you leave, that you when you leave, you have, and it's just like, wow, they need our help. And I, I, yeah, I waited twenty, I waited twenty six years to do this, but you know what? It's never too late, right? That's right. That's exactly right, yep. man. We we do appreciate everything you guys have done uh, with the officials versus cancer, and I know that that golf tournament will fill up with ease uh, uh, to support a yeah, good con- we might to, need to just to figure a, out our plans yeah, today. like now. <laughs> yeah, that's going to fill up fast. All right, man, Leland, thanks so much for everything you do. Uh, we'll see you around, I'm sure, this summer at the ball fields, at the tournament, and then uh, hopefully we get you down here a couple of times next football season as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm uh, I'm scheduled, so we're we'll definitely see you guys. I appreciate everything, guys. Yep. Thank you very much, Leland. Have a great day. You too. All right, that is the man, Leland Searcy there. Officials versus cancer. It does. Uh, you're, every time they're at the state tournament in the oh, A&B, yes. it just, oh, man. It yeah. just Because so, I think every, each and every one of us watching, anybody that has children, can kind of picture themselves that, being standing right in the middle of that floor. Right. And, and, and the great things they've done with that. Yeah. I have, you know, you never want it for your child, but when you see it happening to another family, uh, you know, you always have, you know, you've seen it. Pretend, pretend this wasn't a thing. Officials versus cancer, and you see this, the thing. You, you always go, man, I want to help. I want to help. This is a great way to do that. This is an avenue to do that to help them, help a family out is through officials versus cancer. So you know, sign up for this golf tournament if you can't. I, he failed to mention it. I know he does. Officials v. Cancer on Venmo, isn't it? I believe Officials so. v. Cancer. Yeah. And, and, and like they say every time, if everybody just gave 10 or 20 bucks, it makes a world of difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see. June 16th. John Conrad, you put a link, that link. On, I, I just reshared uh, his post. Okay. That has all that info on there. It's on our Skinny on Skin Sports, Sports Facebook page. Very good. That's interesting. That golf course has been the bane of Elk City Elk's existence. <laughs> Maybe the new renovation will change that. There you go. Wrapping up a Thursday here on the show. Yeah, OK Officials vs. Cancer on Venmo. Venmo, perfect. Yeah, thank you, Leland. Yeah, okay. OK Officials. I knew it was something like that. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember exactly what it was. OK Officials vs. Versus, versus Cancer 
on Venmo. Anybody that wants to donate, like I said, you know, twenty bucks from everybody listening right now makes a world of difference. Uh, going to um, that pediatric cancer research, just an, it's an awesome, awesome thing that those guys yes. uh, took up, and uh, it's just gotten better and better, bigger and bigger, and making bigger and bigger differences. Uh, he mentioned fifty six percent was the the cure rate back when they got started in 20, 2015. Uh, what what eighty three or four Texas he, Leland? He, he'll know. He, he might text uh, us. Uh, yeah. 80, uh, 83 yeah. or four, something like that, is what they've gotten to right now. And, and obviously, trying to get all the way to that hundred mark uh, is where is where yeah. everyone would love to see it. I meant to ask him his theory of why you know before this started, he was doing some research and all this. Why you know pediatric cancer centers are the least donated to. I think people just assumed at the time that Maybe. it's it's they're always going to get funded somehow. They're kids, right? They're all, and that's you know sometimes that just goes to the wayside. That people just assume that they're getting enough funds and they're not. So kudos to him to doing some research in this and recognizing a need and just uh, you know attacking it and and, um, and being very progressive with it. I'm, it's it's awesome to have out here. No he's right. He, there's no better state to have it because. There's that's the one thing about Oklahomans is we are a giving community statewide, and when you ask for something, people don't even question it. They'll they'll give. So, and this tournament's gonna like we said, it's gonna fill up fast. They're gonna raise a lot of money and have a good time and, uh, while doing it. No doubt about it. Hopefully, we get to have a good time. Okay, so Jared, yes, I know you've uh, we've we've spoken right here. We're, we're gonna skip all the rest I of the gotta, stuff. I got a this fish thing. This, yes, 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 yes. I got a what's going on here? Okay, so last night uh speaking of cancer, uh my father-in-law took his last radiation treatment. Oh, he he right. was 30 straight days or, or got he got to skip the weekends. But anyhow, on Tuesday, it was his 30th of 30. And so last night went over to Wills. We're we're celebrating that accomplishment. Thanks for the shout out on the softball field. I'm I saw you there. over there sweating uh, as I was walking wasn't out of that the hot, Domino. It? Yeah, it wish it had been like Ju- July. Should've, then you'd have really been yeah, hot. Yeah. Anyhow, so we go over there and I'm thinking to myself, how are we gonna how are we gonna cook this fish? Will caught a bunch of crappie a few years back and it just kind of set in mm-hmm. the freezer. He saw this plan, and you can do this too, Jared. I know you can. You know how I know you can? Because you have the cooking apparatus that we used last night which is the blackstone correct okay he cooked fish on a blackstone here's what happened turn the blackstone on to high mm-hmm. then we got some foil pans put the oil in the foil pans put it on the blackstone and then put the fish and the hush puppies into the grease that way not bad. Oh, it's a phenomenal – because here's the thing. You know what's the worst part of having like a, a fry daddy or, or a, you know, an actual fish fryer mm-hmm. is the cleanup. Oh, yeah. How nasty it gets. Sure, yeah. Guess what the cleanup was for this? Throw the oil pans away. Yeah, throw, throw the full pans away. Or if you wanted to reserve the, the oil, you can pour them back in a jug and then throw them away. Very cool. It was awesome. I'm thinking of all the possibilities now. Oh, it, there's uh, they're in, they're limitless. That's all you got to do. I'm gonna have to look into. And this. we had we had two smaller ones, but he said he he saw it from one of his buddies down south. It was you know on a, on a rig, and he had the big giant. I mean, here's the thing about it, or at least the one he's got. You could put the biggest foil pans you wanted to, long ways, and it would fit onto the blackstone. And you could probably do, he said you could do about three of those across. You know how many pieces of fish you could fry at once? How many? In those big old full pans? Oh, I, I, I can't oh gosh. It, yeah. I mean, the whole thing. Pretty much the whole thing at one time. Yeah one, yeah, one batch, and you've got a fish fry. Wow. It was, the uh, the ingenuity was, it was just awesome. What a great idea. Like I said, the cleanup is nothing. And this came from Will? Well, it came from Will's Snapchat. <laughs> okay, so he can't take full credit. <laughs> but he's the first one I saw do oh, it. Very so cool. We're gonna give the credit to Will. Yeah, I want to try it. And it was it was I'm great. always looking for new ways and things to cook on that blackstone. So I'm gonna add that one to it and try it out. 
the last. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm imagining I could do like fries. Like yeah. you said, hush puppies. I How mean, about just, Drew? Drew has a great point here as well. And if the oil splashes out, it won't cause a fire because right. it's just hitting the blackstone. It's just hitting the blackstone. Right. Great idea. It was a great idea. And the fish came out. It was awesome. It's just hard to beat fried fish. No, yeah. If we're being honest, it's just hard to beat. And, and I mean, really, anything fried is pretty good. And it, it, I think... There, you can taste it, or you can definitely see a difference, or the texture with a crappie. I mean, the, to me, the crappie or the walleye is the best one around here. Okay, it's a little wider, it's a little flakier than say a catfish, but the catfish is still good. Oh, it's, yeah, no one's no one's arguing that fried fish. <laughs> no one's isn't turning good. away. No, <laughs> fried catfish. Oh my gosh, that's bass. I'm not eating that. No, <laughs> nobody's doing that. But the fact that we that you knew it was crappie, or will told you it was crappie. Made it taste a little better because you just the way it goes with fried fish. But no, it was well done, William. Well done. Well done. Very there was good. Was a bunch of desserts. His mother had cinnamon rolls. Had made cinnamon rolls. You can't jump on a golf o- court. Omaha golf had, cart and I almost text. Some. I almost text you. Come on down here. I had chicken parm last night. Oh well, that's pretty good too. Not too bad. Joey made. Chocolate cookies out of cake batter. Mm. They were delicious. Omaha Ooh. made great chocolate chip cookies. Man. It was a feast at the Malloy house. Like a fun Wednesday night. It was. <laughs> and we left early enough to where my head didn't hurt. Well, good for you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a rarity. That's the go main. Out, I, I, you got to go hang out with Will. <laughs> you just you got to tell him, no, no, William. This is it. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll just keep coming like shoes, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, cinnamon roll is a really underrated dessert. I agree, Drew. A good one. A good homemade cinnamon roll is hard to beat. Maybe we'll just talk baking tomorrow, Garrison Financial Friday. Skinny on baking. I like it. I'm not the greatest baker. No. My girls are learning, though. Now, wait a minute. Did you have any of those cookies I brought up here a couple weeks ago? Those turtle cookies? I had one. Pretty good, weren't they? No, not bad. Not that bad. all came from you? I made those, yes. Are we being honest here? 100%. Okay. That was my int- That was my submission into the uh, church baking contest. I wasn't going to... I can't lie at church, Jared. Those really <laughs> were the cookies I made. I don't know if Kara had any help on that one or not. Not much. You're too busy making a carrot cake. <laughs> Everybody have a great Thursday. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports Podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball.